trial. Stefanko faces life in prison if she is convicted of murder. All right, that was our Ashley Wilcott reporting there. And this trial has gotten underway with some pretty substantial testimony. Uh, I want to bring in my guest now. We're going to talk about this together. I have with me celebrity attorney John Phillips and retired deputy inspector for the NYPD, Corey Pegues. Uh, wow, great to have you both with me this hour. Uh, what an hour it's going to be. We're going to dive deep into this one. I've got a lot of questions about it. Uh, we've just got so many trials cooking. We haven't been able to get to this one. And we know it is a retrial. We know she was convicted in trial one, largely because her ex-husband, Chad Cobb, uh, threw her under the bus. You know, we know he's a killer. He's a convicted killer. And of course, he's back for round two in this one. Uh, is he just as convincing? We've got a clip of some of his testimony in it. You're going to see him describing what he says happened that night of the pizza delivery. Uh, she's pretty worked out. Is it fair to say that Ashley did not leave that parking lot alive that night? Yes, ma'am. That's right, because he killed her. Uh, so now the question is, was Erica Stefango involved in this conspiracy? From the point uh, that she was granted the retrial, uh, this is like take two. Again, cloaked in the presumption of innocence, even though we here know what happened in trial number one. Uh, John Phillips, would you kick things off for me, please? Do you think there's any chance Erica Stefango could be successful this second time around for any reason? You know my answer to that question, Counselor, there's always a chance. <laughs> that said, you know, the state is going to pretty much stick to the production that it had the first time. It, it, you know what its case is going to be, which is does give the defense a little bit uh, a, 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 of prep ground and, and, and an advantage to some extent. But the problem is the defense can't change the facts uh, and nothing's happened to change the facts since then. So this this should be take two with the same ending. Right, John, I, I, I'm with you. You know, and even if even if we sort of take Chad Cobb's testimony with a grain of salt, you know, he's a killer. He's a bad guy. He's a thug. Um, you know, he also involved his children in this. Right. And I think some of the best testimony was the daughter that he shared with Ashley Biggs, who sadly had to come in in trial one, is going to come in again in trial two and say that she witnessed stepmom Stefanko making that call. Um, Corey Pegues, tell me, as an investigator, you know, when you have a, a dirt bag like Chad Cobb saying one thing and you've got a child corroborating it, um, tell me how you sift through what is the truth uh, and, and where you go in your investigation in terms of, you know, who you're going to be holding accountable for the wrong. Good morning to both of you. Well, I'm, first of all, I'm glad I didn't call my dirt back because I don't, I, I don't want to get in trouble with court TV. Oh, uh, it's okay, my friend. You can do it. <laughs> you can definitely do it on my show when I'm here. I, I use that term frequently. Uh, I get in trouble if I said some other things I'd like to say, but <laughs> stick a dirt bag. Well. Listen, well, as an investigator, obviously you're going to go, you know, police work is gathering information, analyzing it, and then making a decision to give that information to the district attorney. And when a child is involved, obviously you're going to always take that child's testimony, you know, so you're going to take it very serious, especially if a child witnesses their parent gets murdered. All right. And it's a heavy, heavy emotional thing for a child to testify against one of their parents. So you have to know if that child is testifying to the parent as an investigator, you would want to believe that they're testifying truthfully and to the best of their ability. Right, right, Corey. And you know, do you separate them, you know, as much as possible when you question the child so that she couldn't be in any way affected by Stefanko or by Chad Cobb? Yes, absolutely. You know, in any investigation, all witnesses are separated, everyone. You never want to interview anyone, you know, any group at one time because, you know, they'll play off each other saying you want everybody separately interviewed so that you can independently establish exactly what happened. Right. I have so many more questions for you. And John, uh, Corey Pegues, John Phillips, stand by if you would. And I kept calling Ashley. <laughs> Did you provide that number to the police? Absolutely. Do you I, know? I gave the police information from the the delivery, the delivery stickers, as much as I could possibly give them. Okay. Do you know if the police tried to call that number? I don't. Okay. 
Um, if they did, they didn't do it in front of you. Most likely. Wow. Impactful testimony right there, wasn't it? Let me bring back in our guest, Attorney John Phillips and retired Deputy Inspector for the NYPD, Corey Pegues. Uh Corey, I want to start with you on this one, please. Your thoughts on this witness, his believability, and how he helps advance the state's story? Yeah, this victim it was very impactful, like you said. He was very emotion, uh, emotional. You could see that it was it was true emotion. I don't think that it was something that like he went to acting school and dropped a tear. Um, <clears throat> the good thing is like as soon you you hear his testimony, like as soon as he got there, he saw the blood. He immediately called nine one one to call the police, uh, and you could see you know this really hurts because she was somebody that was very close to him, and I know that he's carrying his pain because of the fact that he was going to escort her on that last delivery. Uh, it, it was very impactful, and I could only imagine when the, the the police were debriefing him or questioning him, he was probably very emotional even doing his um, questioning. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, we see how many years have passed and look the way he cried on the stand. It's like he was just taken right back to, to what happened yesterday. Uh, John Phillips, I see you nodding. Um, you know, you've represented many victims, witnesses in trials, uh, defendants. Uh, tell me, looking at this guy from the defense perspective, let's say you're on the defense side of this. How concerning is this witness's testimony to your case? It's catastrophic. So when you retry a case, and a big case, it's it's very difficult uh, to to recreate emotion and spontaneity. I've had death cases where I've I've had the witness in the first trial. They cried at the right times, and they were their their effect was perfect. And you go into the next trial, and it's been a couple of years or a few years, and you worry that that it's not. It almost looks rehearsed or that, you know, you're faking something and you're like, I wish I could just have that that we had in the first trial. And and I, I don't say this very often, but this was as effective of an attorney witness back and forth as as they should teach in law school. This was, you know, she led a little bit and, there, you know, there were some stutters and some stuff that you could you could pick. But. My goodness, this was a real person who just happened to be, you know, managing uh, a pizza place who who was was a part of this immense tragedy. And it, it was powerful. You're right, John. And thank you for pointing that out. You're right with the advocacy. It was smooth, wasn't it? That was just smooth as silk uh, for a direct examination. Uh, thank you both uh, for all of that analysis. And we want more uh, questions uh, to be sent your way on this. We've got more testimony on Matthew Travis, that witness we just saw. We I saw that individual. Yes, there was one around her neck. Oh, my goodness. Uh, can you imagine? Ashley Biggs' mother, we saw just there, having to go through this a second time. Bad enough she lost her daughter in such a horrific way. But then there's the trial where uh, one of her daughter's killers is convicted and now the retrial. And, and this woman gets the presumption of innocence with the retrial. Uh, that is going to be so brutal to sit through that. Let me bring back in my guest, celebrity attorney John M. Phillips and retired deputy inspector for the NYPD and the author of the book, Once a Cop, Corey Pegues, on the show today, watching along. Ooh, uh, Corey, let me start with you here. Um, having been on the scene and done investigations where you're coming upon a body and then... After you get to the point of trial, you know, you realize, you know, this is someone's daughter, someone's loved one, you know, and that person is probably looking to you for comfort and support. I can't even imagine what it's like. Would you speak to that, please? Well, listen, I'm, I'm watching a detective there. One of the takeaways I, I took from his um, questioning was he said, I can vividly still see this like it affected him so one of the things people got to understand like with police officers you see this stuff is very traumatic you see it every day and i've told you before on your show that for me personally i use what i i call the corvette effect if i would see su such horror you know working in east new york brooklyn and brownsville brooklyn some of the most violent places in the New York City, if not the country, I saw so much death. But I use this Corvette effect, like every day after work, 
I would act like I got in a Corvette, drop the top, and whatever I saw, I'll drive 100 miles an hour, just let it get out of my brain. And that's the only way that you can really deal with this, unless you like doing some type of therapy. Because when you are working in violent places and you see such horror, it's really hard. The average person don't understand what you're going through. And that's why police officers are so close. You know, people call it this blue wall. But um, I actually call it a blue hug because you all, that's the only people you can really decipher this stuff with because it's very traumatic to see these things. Mm -hmm. I love that, Corey. Uh, you're right. It takes really special people like yourself to do that job, and we thank you for that. Uh, John Phillips, uh, you've done so much great work in your career representing victims in various cases. And uh, here when we look at Ashley Biggs' mother, I know all of our hearts are breaking. Um, as a lawyer... Uh, tell me, if you could give her any piece of advice as she's sitting there watching uh, and listening to this horrible testimony day in and day out, what would that advice be? It, you know, going into trial, it, it, prosecutors and victims attorneys, we all have that conversation about, all right, this is going to be presented. And good, good prosecutors let you know ahead of time. This photograph, this autopsy photo, this medical examiner's report, this discussion is, is coming because you can't unsee this stuff. And, and, and you know, I've had long conversations with officers about, about the toll of these traumas and needing the Corvette effect or counseling. And, and attorneys deal with it too. And, and even in that officer's testimony, you saw when he saw that photo again, even though he'd probably seen it dozens or hundreds of times, he made that, that face of that you know, kind of PTSD effect and the families only do this once and this is their loved one and that is far more of a, a slash on their soul than what kind of we get used to in some ways mm -hmm. you're right john i mean it's it's trauma they are going through that trauma just like you know corey has gone through you know throughout his career coming up on homicide scenes it, it is it is awful um hopefully that justice uh, hopefully justice will be served uh in this case uh for uh Ashley Biggs, uh, the victim in all of this. Um, tell me, you know, if you both had to make an early call today, and I know it's early into the evidence uh, in terms of who's going to prevail, the state of Ohio or Erica Stefanko on this one, uh, what would you say? Uh, John, to you first, please. Uh, guilty. Guilty. Corey Pegues, what do you say, please? A second the motion. Second the motion. Uh, I'm going to be number three. I think we're going to see a guilty verdict again, my friends. Uh, so great having you both on the program. Corey Pegues, John Phillips. Three I strikes. wish we could have you both every day. What's that, Corey? I said, I said three strikes. Three strikes. Three strikes, John. Yep. <laughs> three strikes. Yeah. Stefanko, uh, in my opinion, she's out. Uh, we'll see if she testifies. That's what I'm curious about. Uh, we've heard rumblings. Nothing confirmed yet. If we get that confirmed, we'll share it. Uh, but there are some rumblings that she may want to testify this time around. Uh, gotta leave it there. Big thanks to John Phillips and Corey Pegues for being our analysts on the program today. We've got another hour of Court TV Live coming up next. And get